All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm here on the show to talk about some uh, NFL news. We're going to get around to it here. Uh, so, we had some breaking news about an hour ago. Breaking. Hashtag Saints star, if it's here, is star anymore. Wide receiver Michael Thomas was seen taken away by police in Canada, according to w WDSU, a New Orleans area news site, or on Twitter, whatever. T Thomas is being accused of throwing a brick at the car of contractors who were parking in the street near his house. Thomas is also accused of taking that person's phone and throwing it when he started recording. Another Saints receiver man in trouble with the law. This time is more serious. With, you know, Thomas being accused of throwing a brick at the car of the contractors who were parking in the street near his house. Uh, the man also claims that he not only threw a brick at his truck, but physically pushed him during the altercation. It's not a good look at all. You know, Saints players haven't been able to keep themselves out of trouble recently, man. With Chris Olave, you know, with his situation, Michael Thomas, like, sheesh. And also, an update, the neighbor says that Saints wide receiver Michael Thomas grabbed him and pushed him after throwing two bricks at his car. It's a really bad look for Michael Thomas. I mean, people say, oh, yeah, you'll call the police for anything. Yeah, when someone throws bricks at your car, you should. The, just call the police to take care of the situation. Don't try and whoop his ass and get him just cause a scene. Just call the police to take care of the situation. So, I don't know if anything will come out of this, but... Definitely an interesting uh, situation. Definitely an interesting situation there, though. Just a couple weeks after Saints wide receiver Chris Olave was arrested for going 70 in a 35 miles per hour zone, which is kind of serious, too. You know, going 30, about 35 miles per hour above the speed limit. Then, Michael Thomas, with his situation I just talked about, they need to get things under control, man. Absolute thugs on that team in New Orleans. So, per your report, we have some more stuff about Josh McDaniels. A hashtag Raiders player said that Josh McDaniels was, quote, clueless as the head coach of the team, that he was, quote, in his own bubble, and that no one was having any fun via SNL. End quote. I don't think he knew how unhappy and how miserable it was, a player said in the report. No one was having any fun. I personally think he had no clue what it was like because he lives in his own bubble, his process, and it wasn't working, another player added. Josh never left the building. I don't hate him. I like Josh, but I don't think he was tone deaf. I think he was clueless, end quote. So, I wonder how, what pl Raiders player said this. There's more than one player who's quoted in the report. It's not just one specific player. But I'm not shocked the guy who managed to miss the playoffs with an eight with an eight no team before as a head coach was it was a failure as head coach. He was six and zero that year and finished fucking two and eight. This doesn't surprise me at all. Terrible head coach. He's just not as good as people thought. Why well, don't anybody thought he was a good coach? We saw his previous ten like ten ten years at other places and it never works. He's a destroyer of teams as a head coach. I think he is clueless. So the perfect NFL quarterback according to hashtag Panthers rookie Bryce Young via at Taylor via at Taylor Rooks. How would you build your own perfect quarterback? She said the consistency consistency of Bryce Young, the pocket presence of Tom Brady, speed and agility of Michael Mike Vick slash Lamar Jackson, creativity of Patrick Mahomes, ability to make all throws, Aaron Rodgers. Consistency is fair. You can be consistently bad, like Bryce Young's been. I mean, it doesn't help that, you know. Your wide receiver one's that thing. Well, he's good, but he's on wide receiver one. But he should definitely be. But comparing him to how C.J. Stroud plays, not like he has an elite targets either. So, P Bryce Young really said himself, yeah, consistency of being bad. 
So, the least amount of points per game this season, the Giants are first with 11.2 points per game. The Patriots, 15.0 points per game. Jets, 16.5 points per game. 16.6 points per game for the Steelers. 16.8 points per game for the Cardinals. And Panthers, 17.0 points per game. But there's a uh, one thing uh, here to take away. The Steelers are the only team with a winning record on this list. And why, you may ask, because of their defense. Their defense is doing a crazy carry job. They're averaging like 16 points a game. Like their defense is carrying. Like their offense with Matt Cannon, the offense is just not good. I, I, they'd be one of the best teams in the league if they had an above average offense. Because their defense is so good. So, um... The Bears and Panthers game last night was one of the worst games in recent memory, and yet it averaged 9.56 million viewers, up 41% from last year's comparable game via at NFL on Prime. I mean, it's still football, so people are going to watch. It doesn't matter if it's 1 7 versus 2 and 17. People are still going to watch. I mean, yeah, I guess it's kind of getting the. I guess it's a good idea of getting the bad teams playing on Thursday just to showcase players you don't normally get to see, like. Probably the first game people watch Bryce Young or some some say or say it like that, but it's still football. People are gonna watch. So uh, update: Hashtag Rams QB Matthew Stafford says he's not currently considering retirement via the Pat McAfee show. I mean, he still has plenty of gas left in the tank. So I mean, he's still gonna play. Update: The hashtag Cardinals have made it official. They've confirmed that QB Kyler Murray will start against the hashtag Falcons on Sunday. He is officially back. So hopefully, um, Kyler Murray can, um, you know, ball out. Cause I want to see him do good. I'm not rooting for him to fail. I actually want to see him play well. Coming back. <laughs> per report, ESPN will ban insiders such as Adam Schefter, Adrian Wojnarowski. And other reporters from betting on the leagues and sports that they covered per at M, M. at M. McCarthy Rev. ESPN wants to prevent confidential information from insiders like Woj and Adam Schefter from being used for betting purposes. ESPN recently launched their own betting app. I guess it wasn't already this way, but I guess it is now. Yeah, I guess it's this way now. So, uh, former, um, uh, Michigan or former uh, Ravens coach Jim Harbaugh, a former NFL coach, obviously been in Michigan the last few years. So uh, we got the um, punishment for Michigan, if you want to say it's a punishment. Michigan coach Jim Harbaugh will be prohibited from being on the sideline until the conclusion of the regular season amid the ongoing sign stealing investigation, according to Pete Thamel. He will be allowed to coach during the week. So he'll be allowed to coach during the week. It's kind of just an odd punishment, if you even want to say it is. But they suspended him from the sidelines for the rest of the regular season, but he can still coach him, the team in a 10 practice. It's kind of a bit of a weird punishment, honestly. I don't know if you can say it is. But I don't know if this means anything. Honestly. I mean, it's, I don't know, it's just whatever with the suspension. Uh, update, Hashtag Bills announced that wide receiver once Stephon Diggs was added to the injury report with a back injury. The Bills play the Hashtag Broncos in Week 10. And he's probably going to play, honestly. Him and Josh's back have to be killing from carrying this damn team, carrying that sorry-ass wide receiver. <laughs> so, <laughs> the Panthers fail to 1-8. and And a group of Panthers fans are planning a march on Sunday to the team's stadium in protest of the team losing this season. They at Panther Nation PC. The Panthers are 1-8 after flying to the Bears 16-13 to on Thursday Night Football. Quote, they call it, March on Mint. We love our team, but it's time to demand better performance on the field. Let's show our passion, passion peacefully and push for change. I wonder, I wonder how many fans will actually fucking show up. It'll probably be the best march down the field for the Panthers all season, so. And the ownership probably still won't give a shit, though. Update, Browns pass rusher Miles Garrett went into detail. Uh, on why he believed Joe Burrow's better than the Ravens Lamar Jackson. Talked about it uh, last night, I believe. He's produced at a higher level at this point, even though Lamar has an MVP. I think the results that Burrow has speak for themselves. I'd give Burrow the nod for what he's been able to accomplish. I mean, Lamar's playoff stats are pretty horrible. 
And Joe Burrow's had a Super Bowl appearance. It's 9-4 over the last couple of years in the playoffs. If you, I don't know if you have any football knowledge, but Lamar has one playoff wins to three losses and three touchdowns to five and teams in the playoffs. Sure, he's been amazing in the regular season. His regular season numbers are great. It's just in the playoffs that when he, he folds. But we'll see. Maybe this year it can change. Maybe he can prove me wrong. But but Miles Garrett's kind of speaking facts here. Joe Burrow's one of the top, you'd say, like two, three quarterbacks in the league. Um, so Vikings wide receiver Justin Jefferson is listed as questionable for Sunday's game against Hashtag Saints. Rookie QB Jaron Hall is out, so it looks like Josh Dobbs is starting to get that Josh Dobbs to Jay Jadis connection. Um, update Hashtag Bengals have ruled out wide receiver uh, T. Higgins and uh, Sam Hubbard for the Texans game. Jamar Chase is questionable. Uh, for this game for the Texans injury. Texans starting wide receiver Nico Collins and running, running back Damian Pierce are expected to be out for the Week 10 game against the Bengals. So some key injuries here um, for the Texans, man. The running back with Pierce and Nico Collins going to be out. Maybe it's going to be Tank Dale season. Tank Dale uh, wide receiver one. Uh, so the lowest pass rating allowed by linebackers entering Week 10, Michael McFadden, Oren Burks, Jelani Tavai, Blake Cashman, EJ Speed, Terrell Bernard, Devin White, Robert Spillane, Ernest Jones, and Willie Yates, your top 10. Michael McFadden's leading the charge for that defense, man. So, Colin Coward, man, had another fucking Colin Coward moment. Um, so, Colin Coward says that the Bears are out of the Caleb Williams-Drake May sweepstakes because they beat the Panthers last night and are now, quote, too good. So the thing is, though, the Bears hold the Panthers first round pick via the Bryce Young trade. You'd think he'd know that doing a daily sports show and getting paid millions of dollars to talk about the fucking sport. I don't even know what. How does this fucking dude have a show? Like, he just says anything. Patriots QB Matt Jones has the worst turnover worthy plays in the NFL with 18 according to that PFF. Jones also currently has nine INTs tied for the NFL lead. That's despite missing some time missing time due during some games due to benching. He's missed a total of one quarter due to benching. Or maybe a quarter or two. He's just trash. So Colorado Shadur Sanders believes he's a combination of Tom Brady and Michael Vick. I'll say it, it's a mixture because I'm able to stay in the pocket and deliver the ball. I can play like Brady, but I'm also able to extend plays, and if it's not there, take it like Vic. So it just depends. It's funny whether situations in the game occur. They're like, hey, you got to be Vic tonight. you got to be Mike Vic tonight. So, it's, so then that's when you bring, so that's when we bring our legs involved. Sure, was it Shadur was then asked, so do you have a Brady mode and a Mike Vic mode? Answer both in the legendary mode. Jesus Christ. Nothing about him reminds me of Michael Vick. And, buddy, you're not Tom Brady, buddy. Calm down. Panthers QB Bryce Hayes has, has statistically been the worst QB in football for ESPN. So, he's last in total QBR, yards per attempt, the uh, 8-7 TD interception ratio. They should have percent send him for his own health at this point. He's been taking a ton of hits, but maybe he can keep playing and get him reps. Former NFL player Chad Wheeler was found guilty of domestic assault or, or violence after attacking his girlfriend, Aaliyah Taylor, in 2021. He played for the Seahawks at the time, was accused of pinning uh, her down, twice choking her until she lost con consciousness. When she regained consciousness for the second time, he reportedly expressed surprise that she was still alive. He was found guilty of first and second degree assault slash domestic violence. Dude, lock him up. What a fucking loser. I just don't get being on women, dude. Like, this fucking dude is just... What a clown. So, remember when Adam Thielen... He said this quote. Earlier season, he said... I'm signing with Carolina. Quote, I feel like there's a real chance to win a Super Bowl. He's played well this season, but... 1-8, remember when he said that? <laughs> yeah, that's kind of funny. But yeah, it's all to say for this NFL news, so um, until next time, Michael Lott, peace.